Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to do a video on a topic I've been wanting to make a video about for a long, long time, and that is the use of a box blade. And this will be part of a larger video uh, where I am going to uh, uh, maintain my driveway and, and, and grade my gravel driveway. It's been about five or six years since I've done anything to the driveway, so it's a little bit uh, overdue. But really, I think the focus is going to be on technique and using the box blade. Um, this is by far my favorite tractor implement. I think it's a really remarkable implement. Um, this was invented many years ago, I think late 1800s, early 1900s. And uh, it's just really a versatile tool for any type of uh, land work, uh, grading, any types of improvements you have to make where you're moving dirt or smoothing things or shaping things. Um, and uh, so um, we're going to kind of break this up into a few parts. I might actually split this over a couple days depending on uh, how the weather does and whether it cooperates with me. Um, but uh, after we get done here with the intro, I want to go out and show you what's going on with the driveway, talk about what needs to be done and, and how I'm going to uh, address that. And um, then we'll come back in and we'll talk a little bit about the box blade, point out some of the key features of it and, and how it works. Then I want to switch over to the computer with some diagrams, which will make it easier to explain uh, how box blade works and talk about what I think is kind of the true key secret to using a box blade, which many times people don't know about or they figure out the hard way. So I want to cover that uh, on the computer um, a little bit later on. So stick around and we'll get started. Okay, so here we are out in my driveway uh, just to kind of talk about what's going on. Um, here's the middle of the driveway we have a crown there's another side of there and then we have this shoulder here and as you can see we've got a low spot here uh, and this is really a rut that's formed and there's one of these on each side of the crown it's formed due to travel of, of, of vehicles over the eight or nine years the driveway's been here um, and this driveway's you know saw tons of construction traffic a lot of cement trucks a lot of really heavy equipment for many years and then uh, daily traffic from our family and deliveries and things like that uh, over a period of six or seven years. So this driveway has gotten a lot of uh, wear and tear. I haven't done really much to this driveway at all in, in all that time. So it's due for a little bit of corrective work. Um, and the problem with having a travel rut like this is, you know, normally this should be filled in and uh, when you get rain or, you, you know, any sort of runoff from snow, you'd want that water to be flowing very directly from the crown uh, off to the shoulder. But when you get a travel rut like this, uh, what happens is that the water is going to actually flow down this way, down the driveway. It's not going to shed water like it's supposed to. And when that happens, you can end up with washout problems further down the hill. You can end up with potholes, um, things you don't want. So uh, this is a good time to address this before it gets much worse. And um, basically what I'm going to do today is bring in some additional uh, crusher run material and uh, use the box blade to uh, spread it and smooth it out and basically fill in in this low spot. If this had been a new driveway uh, where this started happening, you know, soon after it was installed, um, one thing you could do instead of using a box blade, you could take a rear scraper blade and angle it so that when you ran the tractor down along the shoulder, it windrowed or pushed the gravel back up into this travel rut towards towards the crown um, but in this case I don't really need to do that uh, it's not like there's an excess amount of material built up here on the shoulder it's really where I want it it's got grass and weeds growing on it it's pretty stable so I don't really want to um, peel up that shoulder um, so I think the best thing to to do for for this current fix is really just to bring in more material where we've got this rut formed and uh, uh, fill this in with the box blade and it's going to be perfect for that. I mean one of the things a box blade is really good at is transporting material and dropping it into low spots and that's exactly what's going to happen when we drag a box full of material uh, over across the top of this rut. So uh, let's go talk a little bit more about the box blade and then we'll come back out uh, after we do that and get started on this work. Okay, so before we head up to the computer to look at some diagrams, I want to talk about some of the key uh, elements of what goes into the using uh, box blade. Uh, the blade itself is, is pretty simple. It's a, a three-sided box, two sides, a back, uh, the other side here. And 
that's kind of the, one of the, the key things about a box blade that differs from a regular blade, whether it's a rear scraper blade or even a, a land plane or a grader box. It, it gives this implement the ability to collect material and carry it. And so one of the key things you can do with a box blade is if you're grading land and trying to smooth it, you can use the box to remove material from high spots and then transport that material and it will fall into the low spots because of this box shape. And that's kind of one of the key uh, ideas behind the box blade is it, it's not just a blade, it's, it's a, a way to transport material to even out things, knock down high spots, fill in low spots. And that's what really kind of makes it very versatile. Uh, but besides this box shape, uh, we have cutting edges and you can see the rear cutting edge here. There's a front cutting edge right on the other side of this wall, uh, turned the other way. These two uh, together give you a lot of capability depending on how you angle the box. And that's one of the key things a lot of people overlook. Angling the box is done by adjusting the length of the top link on your tractor. If you shorten the top link, the box is going to tilt this way and your inner, your front cutting edge is going to want to dig. If you lengthen the top link, it's going to tilt the box that way. And your rear cutting edge, as you're moving forward, is going to want to smooth. And those are two key extremes that the box blade can do. It can dig or it can smooth. And in between those extremes, all kinds of things can get done. You can move material, you can carry material, um, you can level out high and low spots. Um, just by working between those two extremes of digging or smoothing, all controlled by the length of your top link on the tractor here. Now I, I happen to have a hydraulic top link, um, which I got specifically for using a box blade because it allows me to make adjustments on the fly from the seat. Uh, very, very simple. Most tractors will come standard with a mechanical top link. It's really just a turnbuckle, it looks like this. Uh, if you can reach this from the seat and be able to adjust the length of it, then you can do the same sorts of things. And, and certainly on smaller tractors, you can usually reach this from the seat and uh, shorten or lengthen the top length to adjust the angle of your box. Uh, but for larger tractors, uh, having a hydraulic top link just makes a world of difference. It, it turns this more into an art where you can make fine tune adjustments as you're moving, really get things perfect um, just by moving a lever and looking at the box and seeing how the box responds and the material responds. So uh, hydraulic top link to me is really critical if you're going to do a lot of uh, box blade work. You can also get a hydraulic side link, which I have here. Uh, together these two are often called a top and tilt kit. Um, they give you the ability to, to angle the box or any implement front to back and then side to side. And this is, is very useful if you're doing work like putting a crown on a road. Um, or shaping a ditch. Um, anything where you want to be able to angle this but adjust the angle, having a hydraulic side link uh, is really helpful. Um, but you can also set fixed angles, of course, with a mechanical side link. Today I'm really just going to be working with the existing angles on the driveway. And so I've got uh, my standard mechanical uh, side link installed on the tractor. I've adjusted it so this is level and I'm pretty much going to leave that um, alone today. Uh, so kind of that's an overview uh, before we go up to the computer how things work but the key concepts to remember are first of all the rear cutting edge and the front cutting edge and then the length of your top link because those things all work together to control uh, what the box is going to do. So let's head over to the computer and uh, look at this in more detail. Okay, so here we are at the computer and I want to step through some diagrams and I basically have a you know generic uh, picture of a tractor here and then a box blade mounted on the three-point three, three point hitch as shown here in orange. I've got the top link of the three-point hitch shown in red, the lower links shown in blue. Uh, here in our box blade I'm kind of using a cartoon of a cloud to indicate material. And then um, the box blade has a forward cutting edge shown here and a rear cutting edge shown here. Uh, in all these images we're going to step through, I'm assuming that the three-point hitch is down in a float position, so the box blade is, is down on the ground. So we're going to start off here. This is what I consider to be the neutral position, and this is where you've got the box blade pretty much leveled so that the front and rear cutting edges are both uh, um, level, level or even against the ground. 
if you move the tractor forward in this orientation of the box blade, you're basically in a carry material. You're neither going to smooth or dig. You're kind of going to carry material with you. So whatever material you've accumulated in the box, you'll be able to carry it along as you move forward. Now let's talk about what happens if we shorten the top link shown here. If we do that, we're going to tilt the box forward. And what that's going to do is it's going to engage this forward cutting edge into the ground and that's going to cause the box blade to start digging and it's going to accumulate material uh, when you move the tractor forward. And so that's kind of the key here. If you want to do digging, you want to shorten that top length, tilt the box forward down and engage that front cutting edge to pick up material. And so let's go back to neutral again. And I want to talk about what happens when you lengthen the top link shown up here. When you lengthen the top link, you're going to tilt the box up and back. That's actually going to raise that front cutting edge off of the ground, so it won't be able to do any digging. Uh, and instead, the rear cutting edge is going to be in a feathered position. And so when you move the tractor forward in this arrangement, you're going to do some very effective smoothing. If you have any material in the box, it's going to fall out of the box. It will get smoothed by this rear cutting edge. And uh, this turns out to be one of the primary ways that uh, I will do some shaping on a driveway when doing maintenance. I'll get some material in the box, then I'll immediately put the box, uh, I'll lengthen the top length to put the box into this smoothing arrangement, and I'll go forward and drop material out and then smooth it with, with the rear cutting edge in the box. And so um, these are the kind of the extremes, you know, neutral is kind of your, your middle position of the box. It's it's really not going to dig or smooth. It's going to kind of just transport your material. Uh, you go to one extreme by shortening the top link, and that's digging. You go to the other extreme by lengthening the top link, that's smoothing. And in between those extremes, you can do all sorts of things. And, you know, in my case, I am generally uh, with the hydraulic um, top link, I'm looking at what the box is doing, what the material is doing, and I'm going to be adjusting this top link length on the fly to get the specific result I want in real time. And so that's that's kind of one of the important things as you're going between these extremes with the box plate, keep an eye on the box, keep an eye on the material, keep an eye on your surface and continually tweak it uh, to get the, the desired result. And in between those extremes, you can do all sorts of uh, really cool things with a box plate. It's, it's very versatile. Now, one question I get very frequently is, you know, when you're using a box plate, can you do all this different stuff in reverse? Uh, and the answer is yes, but very carefully. And the reason for that is it's got nothing to do with the box plate. The box plate can do, you know, these operations in reverse. Um, but unfortunately, the three point hitch linkages on a tractor, they're really set up and designed to pull implements forward and put all those linkages in tension. They are really not designed to push backwards on an implement, which would push the linkages in compression. They can handle a little bit of compression, but they're really not uh, made to handle large compression loads. Um, when you put a three-point hitch into a large compression load, generally you're going to bend or break uh, some parts of, of the three-point hitch. Um, some people get away with it, but you know sooner or later it's going to catch up with them and they're going to break something on a three-point hitch. And so. What that means when you're using a box blade, if you want to operate in reverse, really the, the one thing you, you can do is smoothing and spreading of soft material. And again, because things work opposite when we're going in reverse, in this case, if you want to do smoothing and spreading, you would shorten your top link. That's going to tilt the box uh, forward and down. It's going to raise this rear cutting edge off the ground so it's not engaged. It can't do any digging. It can't get stuck or hang up on something that could cause a really big load on the three-point hitch. Uh, and instead, what we've done is we've got this front cutting edge now down on the ground in a feathered position. And so if you put the box blade in this orientation and you move uh, backwards, you go in reverse. If you've got any material behind the box, uh, this is very uh, going to very effectively smooth it and spread it uh, as you go in reverse. And again, this is really intended for soft, loose material only. You don't want to be moving in reverse and backing into like you know heavy compacted clay or soil. You don't want to run into a stump or a root. 
uh, all of those things will cause some pretty serious damage to your, your three-point hitch uh, links. So yes, you can use it in reverse, uh, but it's really for smoothing and spreading only with the box blade shown here and feathered uh, and working on loose material.
Okay, so there's our finished driveway project after spreading, grading, smoothing, and rolling uh, the gravel down. Uh, everything looks really good. Really, the only thing we need at this point is some rain, and uh, that's actually the reason I did this project uh, over the past couple days. We're going to get rain for the uh, next three days, I believe, and uh, that, that's really kind of the, the last key ingredient you need to uh, tie everything together. What the rain's going to do is it washes the fines off of the gravel and then the gravel and the fines lock up. Uh, Crusher Run has gravel of all different scales basically from three quarter inch on down to dust and uh, when you get it wet all of those different sizes of gravel uh, lock together and they really tighten up and that's really kind of what gives you your final uh, hardened surface with Crusher Run. It's a pretty amazing process to see that unfold. So uh, I'll give this a couple days worth of rain to let it settle and lock up uh, then I'll come back out and check, see if there's any high spots or low spots I need to correct. Sometimes you, you miss those when the gravel's loose, but uh, they're, they're more obvious when things uh, uh, tighten up. And uh, if, if needed, those are really easy to adjust uh, with the box blade again. But that's going to wrap up this video. Uh, again, you know, I want to leave you with the key concepts of using the box blade. It's all about setting the angle attack of the box and your cutting edges, your front and your rear cutting edges, uh, using that top link on your tractor. That's really the key to everything. Uh, using the length of that top link to change the angle of the box and then the angle of attack of those cutting edges so that you can go between those extremes of digging and smoothing and kind of do everything in between. So uh, that's going to be it for today. Thanks for watching.